Good evening, this is the Oscar Expert here with Brother Bro. We are at the Toronto Film Festival, and it's time to review Dear Evan Hansen. This is a major motion picture adaptation of the Tony Award winning musical. A lot of people were nervous that this wouldn't be very good. Yeah, I thought from the trailer, it was like, I don't really know why we need the movie adaptation, and it just doesn't look particularly good. I'm someone who loved the musical, and I think it's brilliantly written. I love how each character's desires are sort of exposed throughout, and they're given opportunities to have what they want with some sort of like trade-off, and it's just really strong writing to me. People were criticizing the musical overall for like having un this unlikable character who kind of does unsavory things, but yeah, you're just like, describing what the movie is to me. Thank you, now please watch the movie. If you have a problem with the character being unlikable, congratulations, Evan Hansen really agrees with you. Yeah, I understand if you feel like he's a little bit redeemed in the end, but that's like the only part that I would agree with. Well, people don't like that you're being asked to root for him, but that's kind of the point of the whole thing is like, you're supposed to have enough empathy where you can see the genuine parts of the character. I think some people have problems when they see that somebody just like, oh, they're not good. Like they're just like good or bad and this person is not good. I mean, th this film's all about like moral gray area. Obviously it's okay to have an opinion on whether something is bad, but does it make a person bad is sort of the question I think that's more relevant here. So th this is a really rich source material and did they bring this to the screen in a compelling way? It turns out that this film stuck pretty closely to the source material. It's basically the play on screen. It does a pretty safe treatment of adapting this play. Like there's nothing crazy going on with the cinematography. I feel like all you really had to do here was take this piece of writing and then get some really well-trained screen actors behind it. And I think that's what they did here and it really worked for me. I think this might be the only movie musical I've seen where there aren't, there's not like a big dance number or there's not like a horde of people dancing. Probably one of the most low key musicals I've seen. And I wouldn't have wanted them to play it up like it's the prom or hairspray or something. Although as a movie, it's a little strange because it becomes a little bit more like a straightforward coming of age story. Whereas on the stage, it's like, whoa, you're taking this coming of age story and you're making like this big musical. And now it's kind of a little bit brought back down. It definitely works as a movie, but it, it's not as punchy. I don't think it works as well. I feel like this is a solid kind of made for streaming musical adaptation. And I could see this becoming one of people's favorite coming of age dramas for like just it fits well within that genre that we often see do really well on streaming. I am really glad that more people will get to experience this source material, even if it is in this different format. I do think it loses a lot of the power that made the musical great to me, whereas I think this is very good. I don't think anything in here like shows film greatness, but overall, I don't think this really misfired in any areas in a very severe way. It almost seemed like this was easy to adapt into a movie. Like if you take the script, it's kind of right there. Everything that's good about the original script is still here. And you have great actors playing all the roles. So therefore, like I liked the movie, I enjoyed it, and I was occasionally moved by it. I do think it comes across a little more melodramatic on screen because as a musical, we kind of expect the bombast and we expect it to be really big. And so when you contain it like this, the bigness of the story and of the music and like the heavy emotions that people are going through, it at times, borders on being overly dramatic, but I do think that because the actors were so good, they did sell it. But I did get the feeling that there are gonna be critics that think that this was just like too much and it was too sappy. And then there are gonna be a lot of people who were very skeptical, but were just won over because there's nothing really like that wrong with it, I don't think. I mean, Stephen Chbosky at this point is kind of known for adapting well-known novels faithfully. I mean, he did it with Perks of Being a Wallflower and Wonder. And both those movies were huge crowd pleasers. I expect the very same. I mean, if you liked the musical, you're gonna like this movie. Moms will like it, teens will like it. I did feel like I was going through a lot of these emotions with the character, like the feeling of just being like totally locked up and anxious in high school, feeling his embarrassment and just like cringing really hard when he's in these situations that he doesn't have really any easy way out of. You're like trying to like claw your eyes out because you're like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. This is so cringy. That's the one thing I think that having this on film benefited from was that the social anxiety that the main character experiences feels even more like up close and cringeworthy. Yeah, I think some of the humor was lost a little bit on the screen. Jokes that would have worked better in like that kind of stagey atmosphere almost feel like a little more sad uh, and dark rather than like darkly actually really funny. When Caitlin Dever was like, 
oh, I win because my dad. That was really funny on the stage. And in, in, in this film, it was like a little more sad. I do think, though, this could have been a bad movie if the director didn't hit the right notes and if the actors weren't hitting the right tone. Everybody here does a really good job. Obviously, Ben Platt is reprising his role from the stage and he's fantastic here. He had absolutely no problem moving to the screen. You can see that film acting and stage acting are completely different, but he still does a really good job. He nailed like how big to go with it and he was really effective at communicating like what this character was going through. Yeah, I really felt his anxiety throughout the whole movie and I felt like I was in his shoes a lot of the time, secondhand experiencing those thoughts that I like I know that he's having. A lot of people are gonna be distracted by like the fact that he's a little bit too old for the role. I mean, it was obvious from the trailer, it was one of the things that people freaked out about the most and yeah, there were times where I noticed it. Did it keep me from being emotionally invested in this character? Not at all. Nobody knows the role better than he does, and he nailed it. Bunch of really good supporting performances here. Amy Adams, in particular, has like a lot of moments to shine. I think Caitlin Deaver gives one of her best performances easily, and if you're a fan of her, you will not be disappointed. Just like in the play, there's a lot of moments for these people to shine. So Julianne Moore is in the film, and just when I thought she may not have had enough screen time, the ending, she knocked it out of the park. Amanda Stenberg is also really great here, as she was in The Hate You Give. If you're excited about any of these performers, you just won't be disappointed because like they all have great scenes. As far as the story, I do kind of agree, and I know this was an accusation made against the musical, that he is a little bit too redeemed in the ending. I actually felt that more on this viewing than I did when I saw it on stage. Maybe because it felt a little bit longer for the screen as well. I could see some people thinking that a couple of the numbers needed to be taken out, and I did do think they cut some, and those are probably good choices overall. I sort of get what you're saying about his redemption, but I also think it made sense for what the movie's trying to say, that he gets redeemed because the movie is about like trying to recognize the worth in other people and how we could all help each other out with that more. There were some moments where emotionally I wasn't buying things as well as I did when I was watching the musical. Overall, I was really wrapped into this film and there were definitely some scenes that got me. This won't find much trouble in making audiences cry. Our screening was actually like really quiet because it was a press screening. I could like feel that some people were like not into it and I was kind of like, I bet at the public screening they're having a great time. I bet they're having a great time at the public screening. If you don't like the original, you'll have the same exact problems and they might even be exaggerated. This movie's really kind of catering to an audience and I could just see people who are really snobby, like not like it. But I definitely fell into the movie and I really enjoyed the experience. You can't really go wrong with the source material. It just brilliantly weaves these characters' desires together and does like an excellent job at sort of building the stakes and having people like, connect at you know interesting points where what both these characters want is like colliding at the same time and they're all seeing like opportunity and seizing it and there being like this massive moral quandary at the center but you really understanding where people are coming from and i got to re-experience that i give this an 8 out of 10. i did find it to be kind of thought-provoking too on top of everything else that i liked about it and just being emotionally invested in it i think that it is like a downgrade from the musical but it still works I give it a 7 out of 10. Every movie that you give less than an 8 now, that's like supposed to be really good, like if you don't like Power of the Dog. Oh, I like Dear Evan gonna, Hansen more. Yeah, people are going to do that to you. Yeah, if I if I don't like Power of the Dog, I'm fucked forever. My whole reputation is tarnished. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. What would you write to Evan Hansen?